Um, how you, what, what really got you into cosplaying? What started it all? Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, it started off just, I was looking on DeviantArt and a lot of the art communities and I saw people cosplaying and I thought, you know, this looks cool, they're having a good time, so why not check it out? And then I went down to my first anime convention in Montreal back in 2010, I believe, and yeah, I just went from there. Okay, okay. And the uh, cosplay that you saw here, what really uh, struck you, you know, uh, that re you really liked and loved to see? Um, right now, the cosplays I love to see are just the ones, that, the really big armor and things like that. You know, things that you, you can appreciate all the craftsmanship going into it. Now that I actually make all my cosplays by hand, I know how much time and energy it takes to build something like that. Oh, I could imagine. Could so, it? yeah, I have a lot of appreciation for that. But I also appreciate the newbies coming up, you know, people who buy stuff at thrift shops and whatnot, you know. You gotta start somewhere. Okay, all right. Now, um, what was your first cosplay character ever? My first one would be Germany from Hitalia. The reason why is because when I was watching the show, I thought, hey, I speak German, I'm pretty tough, I can pull this off. So I went down to Value Village, got some uh, a green suit and modified it, did little accents on it myself, and so I pretty much started crafting. Oh, okay, all right. That now, German in, in itself, you know, were, were you an army brat uh, growing up? No, no, um, I just took courses when I was in school. Oh, okay. Yeah. How fluent are you? Uh, ich, ich bin ich so fleißig. Um, ich kann uh, auf Deutschland um, Essen bestellen, zum Beispiel. Ooh. I can order food. I can get by in Germany, pretty much. That's, I've been uh, there a few times. You know, that sounds like you just maybe get uh, a hunger spurt right now. <laughs> like you're ordering food or something. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, let's start right here. Um, what was your first convention that you attended as a cosplayer? Um, that would have had to be Otakuthan 2010 in Montreal. That was the anime convention I mentioned. I had just gone down with a friend and we were totally new to the scene. We didn't know anything, so it was just so much to take in. But and what struck me the most was how welcoming people were. Even though they didn't know who we were, where we were from, when they saw people cosplaying through the same series, we were invited to the photo shoots. Oh, excellent. Mm. Excellent. Now, uh, obviously, that's a positive experience you, you received from that for the very first time. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, do you consider yourself to be a geek? Yes, I do. Okay, now tell me why, tell me why. Well, I'm, I'm very into a lot of these sort of geeky interests, like I'm a huge Hunger Games fan, huge Harry Potter nerd, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite and, book, yeah. by the way? Uh, Half-Blood Prince. Ooh, nice one, good. All right, yeah. go on, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, so... There is all that. I mean, nowadays, geek culture is so mainstream that you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody who doesn't have an interest in it. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at the Marvel movies, how much they're making in the box office. Like, those things were unheard of years ago. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Someone once told me that um, they could be totally against people reading comic books, but yet they'll run over their mother to see a Marvel movie. This is true. Yes, true. I've seen that. All right then. Well, it, obviously it's it it's, uh, holds water here. Um, what sort of um, geeky things do you normally do? Like video games. Uh, obviously, uh, Marvel movies is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else that you find yourself like doing a, a geeky thing? Well, I, I read quite a few comics right now. My big thing is Black Panther. I've discovered him recently, and I'm a huge fan. So, been reading those, and then just video games here and there of all sorts, PS3, mostly PS3 and uh, Nintendo DS. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, rumor has it, and I'm, I just want your opinion on it, rumor has it that Black Panther's character was going to be white. Any thoughts on that? That wouldn't be right. I mean, he's from Wakanda. It's a, an African nation. It would take away from the character if they made him white. I agree. I agree. Well, just wanted to get your thoughts on that one here. Now, um, when you're doing your cosplay outfits, do you do you decide on like more on the budget side to getting it done or getting the wow effect? I just basically go for screen accuracy at this okay. point. So I try to work within a budget and do the wow effect, but at the same time, I want to make it pretty much exactly as screen accurate as I can get it. 
Okay, all right, very good then. And um, how long does it normally take for you to, from start to finish to getting it done? It depends on the cosplay. I've done some, like my Snape one was done in a month. Let's say, well, this is just basically working weekends because I work nearly 50 hours a week these days. But the Effie Trinket butterfly dress took me seven months to make because I had painted all those butterflies onto it. There are 500 <laughs> butterflies on that dress. It's, it's, I never want to see another butterfly again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were having nightmares from that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was two years ago and I mean, I still wear it because after all that work, that's another thing too. I make my stuff to be reworn multiple times. Oh, I see. Oh, that's good. That's least cost effective. Yes, it is. Excellent, excellent. Well, well, I, I certainly hope you don't see another butterfly anytime soon. <laughs> well, no, winter's coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, since you've gone to some of the uh, conventions out there, get, obviously you, you get appreciative of some of the cosplay outfits that they have. Do you feel sometimes some cosplayers might be a little too risque, too revealing? Well, I mean, personally, sometimes I think so. Like, I'll think in my head when I see someone, like, oh my god, their ass is hanging out. But at the same time, it's up to them to do it. And if the convention's not banning people for doing it, then just leave them be. I personally don't understand it because I'm always cold. I could never do that in a convention center. I would freeze to death. As much as I see it and I think, okay, I've got a great body, I can pull this off. I, on the other hand, my little angel on this side is going, no, you're going to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> now you had mentioned that the cosplay you're drawn to is the the complexity or you know the armor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Any particular ones you may be looking to do in the f near future? Right now, I'm working on a Sejuani from League of Legends. It's okay. a good starting point. It's my first armor build out of foam, and I'm learning a lot at the same time. There are a lot of sort of snags in the process, but you know that's how you learn. Well, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, what what sort of budget would you give yourself to making a costume like that? This one, I'm actually going below the budget. I was giving myself maybe two or three hundred dollars, but I've been finding a lot of the foam and stuff really cheap, just recycling materials. So it's probably going to come up to be hundred fifty if I'm lucky. Okay. Now, yeah. now, now let's change a little gears here. Now, um, fans, since in case you just may not be aware of this, but she's in Canada, Ontario, correct? Who is? You. You are in Canada. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ontario. Yes, Ottawa. The capital, Ottawa. to be correct. Ottawa. That's why my Effie trinket works so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's what's happening out there? We're actually we're here in the capital. We're gearing up for next year because it's Canada's twenty or hundred fiftieth anniversary. So there's a big Canada twenty seventeen everywhere you go in the capital, and it's, wow. it's getting crazy. Oh wow! So if you want to come to the capital of Canada next year, you better book now because things are getting sold out. All right then, you heard it, fans. You definitely heard it from there. Um, let's see here. Um, you just recently went to a, a convention right now. Tell us about yes. that. Okay, so I went to a Fan Expo in Toronto. That's uh, Canada's biggest convention. It's a multi-genre convention. And that was really interesting. I've been going for the last four years and it's, it's intense. That's what I have to say. I cannot imagine, you know, NYCC or San Diego, which are the two bigger ones. If, you know, Fat Expo is that much. It was also Stan Lee's last Canadian appearance. Oh, really? Yes. Is he looking to retire from the, uh, the circuit? I think so. He's, he seems a bit tired. I mean, he is, what, 93, 94? Well, Something like that. Well, it doesn't help him that he's always hugging, like, these beautiful, sexy cosplayers right next to him. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure his heart's just skipping a beat once or he's twice. He's got a strong heart, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, listen, let's change gears here. Um... Hoggy, you just enter the lightning round, so I hope you're prepared, okay? I see you have water, so let's let's all start with this. Uh, top favorite Marvel movie? Right now, it would have to be Captain America Civil War, just because of the Black Panther. Okay, very good then. He stole the show. Uh, top favorite, and you, you don't have to answer, top favorite DC movie? I have not seen a DC one since, like, Batman Returns, which is the one Bane was in. You can tell I don't really pay attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame it. I don't think many people did it either. <laughs> uh, favorite food you like to eat, and eat it so much that you would not gain a pound? Sushi. Sushi, I okay. Sushi. All right, very good then. Uh, favorite uh, movie food, and not gain a pound? 
Mm. Anyway, I'm not sure if there's a specific type of food, but all the food that I saw in the capital of the Hunger Games looks really fancy, and I'd like to try it. Okay, all right then. If you were stuck on an island, nope, and you had to stay there for the rest of your life, who would you like to speak with for the rest of your life, living or dead? Alan Rickman. Yeah, I don't know if you can see here, but I got a snake tattoo on my shoulder. Wow, no, and see, I know I saw it. It kind of looked like a, a very octopusy sort of look. It's, but it's a close snake. up, but Alan Rickman, yes. Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Nice so, bad. And yeah, you know the artist? Who, you know the artist who did that? Oh yeah, that's uh, Melanie Lamb from Free World Tattoo here in Ottawa. Okay, just as a plug in in itself. Very mm -hmm. nice, very nice, right away. Any further tattoos that you're thinking of having? I'm thinking of some right now, but it's just at the concept stage. There's no no plans set. No plans set. Okay, very good mm -hmm. then. <laughs> Favorite football team, hockey team? I don't really have one. I'd probably say the Ottawa Senators because they're my hometown team, but aside from that, I don't really pay attention to the sports. Okay. I'm more of a soccer fan myself. Oh, really? Okay, excellent. Yeah. Uh, Favorite soccer team then? Deutschland and Bayern München. All right, very good, very good then. Uh, are you considering yourself a hugger or a handshaker? It depends. I'd rather shake the hands of people I don't know too well. Friends, I'll hug because they do it too, so. Okay, all right, very good then. Uh, what would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> I don't even like Klondike bars. Look at questions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good then. Uh, that's probably maybe the safe answer there. Um, let's see here. Um, what would be the one cosplaying character to which you absolutely all all time love to portray? Well, right now I'm I've been doing it for the last four years is Effie Trinket. Effie Trinket, okay, very yes. good then. Uh, let's see here. If um, any other cosplayers out there that you are inspired by or love their work. Um, it's hard to say. I do follow quite a few, but I don't really have like a specific one that I really like. I do like Princess Mentality. You may know her as the Black Sailor Moon at one point. She's written a lot and she's all over the internet, so I do appreciate her work. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very good. Uh, anything like as far as books, uh, poetry you like to read? Oh, I've, I read a lot of stuff. So right now I'm reading um, The Wildlings by Neil and John Roy. It's pretty much a book about cats. So, Indian cats. <laughs> okay, all right then. Yeah. Um, favorite game you like to play? Uh, whether it be, huge... that be electronic or board game, whichever the two. Okay, um, for electronic, I definitely have to say Portal 2. That's my favorite video game of all time. And I just like the puzzle type. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah, very good, very good game. Mm -hmm. um, what is the one thing that uh, people recognize you about? Um, what they recognize about me? Yeah. Um, well, friends, I mean, they know me closely, so there's not really a specific thing, but I know this past weekend at the con, everybody was like, it's that Effie Trinket from the Capitals! <laughs> and she's actually from Ottawa, which is the capital, so there's always that. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, pet peeve? Racism and cosplay, that's a big one. Let's go in depth for it, if you don't mind here. Um, what have you noticed from that? Well, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I haven't experienced a lot of hate. Like, I can post my stuff online, and I don't know if it's just what the people I associate with. I don't have too many issues. But there are things like the comments. Like, when I was out one time as Effie Trinket, somebody called me Nicki Minaj. Last past weekend, somebody called me Fish Mooney. And I'm like, stop calling out the names of characters that are black. Just ask what I'm supposed to be if you don't know. Like, and that just frustrates me. Okay. It's so ignorant. I can understand. I can certainly sympathize. Uh, sorry, you have to go through all that. Um, how about harassments in in the uh, anime? Have you um, got any harassments, like as far as like you know, groping or anything of that sort? I've had the few ass grabs when people come in to take a picture and they put their hand a little bit too low. But aside from that, no. Okay. How did you react to that? Did you, did you like tell them or you just move their hand? Well, I, I sort of jumped away because I mean it startled me, and then they realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. And a lot of times now I've noticed what since I've started doing calls with my husband, when they see a guy there, for some reason, they won't do that stuff. But if I'm alone or with a bunch of girls and they're, it's free pass to just squeeze, it, it's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh. gotten better in the few years because now a lot of the cons have the whole cosplay is not consent signs. So that puts a message out there this won't be tolerated. Uh, that ends the interview, and I do humbly appreciate you coming out here and, and sharing your thoughts and ideas to us. 
Uh, and again, this is Brian Madrid. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much, and may the odds be ever in your favor. Excellent.